You're watching Network 126, and we're back to part four of Brian responds to comments about unemployment and the economy. By the way, these are these are from my various videos about ranting about being unemployed and all that. So it's not from just one video; it's from random, you know, any video and any good comments that I see in any of those videos. I select and I print out on here. And I have fun in front of the camera for 10 or 15 minutes at a time. So, um, I am, uh, I left off a big Christina Aguilera fan. Uh, Pyramid Head 138 says, oops, I kind of stapled over the word a little bit. <laughs> I guess I'll have to take that off. <clears throat> oops. Poor pre-planning on my part. There's this restaurant in my town. They had an ad in the paper for cooks. When I went up there and went inside, it looked like they already had all the help they needed. I figured out I may as well fill out their app since I was there. When I handed it back in, little in the lady asked if I had any cooking experience. I said no. Never got a call back. To all employers, if you don't need help, don't ask for it. <laughs> oh man, all kinds of interesting job hunting experiences out there. <laughs> Many of them frustrating to some degree or another. <sighs> it sucks. See, the thing is, how do you get the experience, you know? When you, you know, because probably some of you guys are saying, well, get, just get the experience, you know? <laughs> But it's sometimes it's not always that easy when you can't get your foot in the door, you know? So uh, Pyramid Head 138 again says, Job hunting for me and you is, equiv is the equ equivalent to beating a dead horse. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Which makes it the true literal definition of insanity. Trying the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. Pyramid Head 138, once again. When you're depressed, it robs you of all motivation. Oh yeah. Anyone who's gone through that crap would know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. You wake up every day, and for the rest of the day, there's nothing to do. People keep telling you to keep looking and applying, but what's the use when you apply for every job in your area, and you get zero callbacks? because they tell you that the positions are already filled. It tells me that the lying pricks never needed help to begin with. <laughs> yeah, it sure seems that way. Either they don't really need the help to, to begin with, or they put out the word that they're hiring, and everybody and their mama and grandma comes and applies, and pretty soon they get flooded with, like... I've actually... One time, I remember back, maybe in 2009 or 2010, I applied for this position on Craigslist, and they said that they already had gotten like over 200 um, submissions, and they only had like one position open. 200 for one position. But there's plenty of jobs out there, right? <laughs> oh man, give me a break. Zoop201 says, <laughs> He just wants people to send him money so he can get an RV. Once he does that, he will sit in his RV and beg for money to fix it up and to buy gas. <laughs> Sending him money is an affirmation to his method. He should call Meals on Wheels and tell them he will volunteer if they pay for his bus ticket. I can hear it now. Oh wow, I'm far too creative to ride a bus. I have mad computer skills. Do you know how demeaning that would be for me? <laughs> he will always have a reason for not doing what it takes. Okay, first of all... Once I have my RV, 
which will be named Enterprise, like I said in a previous video and some other ones. I'm going to create a show on YouTube called Road Trek, and at that point, I will be able to have my channel built up to the point where I'm making enough of an income online, not through begging, but through actually YouTube. There's a partnership program. Google it because I'm not really allowed to talk about specifics of how much I make and all that. Um, but I'll just tell you that I'm making something and it is possible to make money on YouTube, but it takes a while. So with that being said, it would be very nice if people helped me out to get the RV, but I do want to be self-sustaining. I hate to have to depend on other people and be a, a burden and be feeling like a mooch all the time. That is not who I am, okay? And the thing I have with public transportation is only certain routes go to certain places between certain hours you know, I've been stranded at bus stops that they say, oh, sorry, this route has been closed and diverted across over the bridge over there. So I'm like, oh, well, okay, no big deal. I go across, I wait. Oh, then I see the bus from the other side of the bridge. I see it passing by the stop that's supposed to be closed. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And they only pass, like, every hour, but, like, after a certain time. So I'm like, oh great, so are they going to go past down there, back down there now? So I go back there, and then an hour later I see it <laughs> back up at the other end of the bridge. So I ended up out there for a few hours, and it was like late at night in L.A. in the middle of nowhere. I, didn't even, I don't even know L.A. So yeah, that's my gripe with public transportation. Anyway, moving on. Cookie Cutter Hour Zero says, oh, this is kind of a response. Um, he just wants a job, like any other person who's been unemployed through no fault of their own. I do volunteer work as a tutor at a nonprofit group, and I still haven't gotten a job through them yet, despite ap applying three times for a job. It's very frustrating out there. Thank you, Cookie uh, Cookie Hour Zero. <laughs> uh, the next door neighbors probably think I'm crazy filming in my car. I've got my studio lights and everything all set up in here. I'm sure I'm putting on quite a spectacle for them. Anyway, moving on. No Pro Go Pronto. <laughs> all kinds of creative usernames. Brian, volunteering is not about working for free. It's about taking your mind off of yourself for a minute to help someone else. I have a full-time job, but I also volunteer on with Meals on Wheels to deliver on foot food to, elder, to elderly people who are stuck in their homes or volunteer at, farmers mar at a farmer's market to get free fresh produce for someone who thinks he's so smart. <laughs> Oh man, I just love some of these commenters, even though they like to try to poke at me. Um, first of all, um, the farmer's market thing, I can see a benefit to, because at least you're getting food out of it to sustain yourself. But see, you have a full-time job. You know, you can afford the extra resources to, to be able to, to get around the places or do whatever you need to do or because you know, also when you're doing more physical activity you get hungrier and so you want to eat more well guess what that costs more money so volunteering can actually end up costing you money if you're not getting anything out of it so yes farmers market if you get free fresh produce I can see the point in that okay um, so moving on, Biff George, one of my favorite commenters, for good reasons. Um, the official unemployment rate is completely and totally irrelevant. It no longer gives an accurate picture of how many Americans are really unemployed. The official unemployment rate is akin to a broken speedometer on a car. Completely useless. Nobody driving a car with a broken speedometer bothers to look at it to get an idea of how fast they are driving. 
Instead, they use their eyes and ears to get an idea of how fast they are driving. It's just common sense, folks. Yes, it is, Biff George. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to read uh, uh, maybe a couple more comments before I move on to part five. Biff George once again. It's funny, when I'm not commenting on YouTube, it's not... It's not as if I'm out living life to the fullest. <laughs> it's not like I'm at work or I'm out with a girl or even out in my car taking in some sunshine. No, it is actually the complete opposite. I'm usually somewhere in the house doing something else like sleeping, eating, and some more sleeping. Okay, occasionally I work out, but you get the idea. <laughs> Oh, man, yeah, I can sadly relate. It's so depressing. I find myself, like, wanting to sleep in so late sometimes just to stay stuck in the dream world. Because <laughs> it, 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 this sounds sad and pathetic, but... Yeah, at least in the dream world, I don't have to make money to do things and get out and go on adventures. Which, uh, a lot of my dreams, I only remember bits and pieces, but... A lot of them seem to center around like going on some adventure or going somewhere, some weird place that I haven't been to before. But it's they're at least they're interesting, you know. <laughs> at least I'm out of the house and I'm not worrying and stressing about being broke and unemployed. Uh, so anyway, Biff George finishes off with um, with no job and no hope of ever finding a good-paying job. Life is dull as fuck. Yeah, which is why the dream world is so much more fun and exciting. So I'm going to uh, end uh, part four right now. You know the drill. Go to part five right now.